I was first involved in this excavation at the James Hutton Institute in Gowrie about a year, well, over a year ago. Um, I thought I was only going up for a few weeks. It ended up being almost a year. So um, it was good. The excavations at the James Hutton this period, uh, yeah, so there have been various excavations and investigations at the Hutton over the years. This, this lot of work was ahead of um, a new development, a redevelopment, and it's going to be the International Barley Hub there and the new Farm Hub. So we had three areas that we were looking at as part of this um, work that we were first doing. So it was where the new road came in, off, off the main road, the main drive up into into the institute, but this area up the top was where we were the most interesting work um, was found. So the James Hutton in uh, Institute is really interesting because it was originally the Scottish Horticultural Research Institute, and this is important because the the work that they did there meant that there were small scale trials there. And um, rather than the land being deep ploughed, it was only ever shallow ploughed. Small areas, shallow ploughing. So when we were first involved, we were asked to do a heritage impact assessment, which identified that there was a likelihood, that strong likelihood, that we were going to have lots and lots of archaeology there. It was surrounded by um, scheduled monuments, which are protected and non-scheduled monuments, which are known about, but they're not so highly protected, so that there could be building work carries on there. So we did the heritage assessment and the heritage impact assessment, and on the basis of that, some geophysics was done ahead of the road building, and that, that picked up bits and pieces. This area at the top, we didn't do geophysics because there were crops in the ground, they were research crops. So, this was the main area in the northwest of the site, um, and we we put uh, there were over 130 trenches as part of this program of works. Um, this area at the top, it was 10% of the of the area that was going to be looked at. This was some of the trenches up there. You can see that they're shallow. Everything was shallow. It came straight onto this natural sandy ground. And it was um, a raised beach, so it drained well. Um, some, we did have land drains cutting across here, but not, not that many. This is when it started to become interesting. So the vast majority of the trenches that we found were shallow, there were land drains, there were occasional features, but nothing too drastic. We thought we could still do it fairly quickly and easily. But then up in this top west corner, this is where it started to become interesting. So we had these stone features, really dark, deep deposits of silt, and we didn't really understand what they were. We didn't know whether they were great big long features or round houses, we just didn't know. So on the basis of that, we picked an area that was going to be opened up. This is again, this is how they looked after the trench has been cleaned up. So the really, really dark silty deposits. And these were really fertile, they kept the... So in the, in the summer last year, it was really hot and dry. Everything was hot and dry. These things that kept the moisture, they never really properly dried out. And they started to grow. If these weren't open for any length of time, they immediately started to grow things. All the weed seeds really quickly fertilized and started to grow. This was an area where the new polytunnels were going to be built. So as part of the new project, building project, they were going to redevelop that, this area. So they're taking down the old polytunnels and building new ones. This is where the new polytunnels were going to go. And you can see here the base of 
Reagan borough. So we picked this up in the trenches. We knew it was there, but it wasn't anything too much to worry about. So we still thought, that's fine, we'll get on fairly quickly. This was our hot zone. The pink area here is based on the trenches. You can just about see in there. The features that we did see in the trenches identified this was the most interesting bit. So we've got a lot going on in this plan. We've got the old polytunnels, the area for the new polytunnels, new buildings, and our trenches, what we found in the trenches. Because we took longer than expected because of this archaeology, it was decided that we would phase our excavation area. So stage one is where the new buildings were going to go. So we decided that this would be done first. There wasn't too much in the trenches so that we could have a look and this would be dealt with first so the building could start and then we could go on with the archaeology. That would carry on. Stage two, we thought, would be really quick and easy because although there'd been archaeology in the trenches to the north of this, there wasn't too much in stage two. As you can see from this, there actually was. <laughs> this was our surprise. So there was a great big roundhouse in stage two, which we didn't expect. We hadn't seen it in any one of the four trenches which surrounded it. <laughs> so that, was, um, that took a lot longer than expected. Stage three was where we knew the majority of the archaeology was, and that's how it ended up. So this is stage one. We opened it up. Um, there was a linear feature, a little ditch that ran north-south, and this was... Um, it ran quite right away across. We still didn't know exactly what it was. It was quite wibbly wobbly, but it's there. And a shallow pit with um, quite a lot of charcoal, quite a lot of burning in there. And then just next to that, there's a little structure of post holes. That was only about three meters across. And again, we don't exactly know what it is at the moment. The other thing to say is, this is, this is really new all of this archaeology. So we have not yet done the full assessment and analysis of this. So what I'm going to tell you about in this, um, this talk is what we found, not necessarily going to tell you what it all means, because that will come later. But it's, um, yeah, it's an interesting, very interesting site. This was our stage two. This is where we thought, we'll open up the area, have a look. It'll be done really quickly. It was not. <laughs> we found this um, roundhouse, which was about 12 metres across. We started finding this stone, as we'd seen in the trenches, but not in these trenches. And uh, so we thought, that's that's fine. Stone roundhouse. And cleaned it all up, and it's full of silt. Uh, so we've got stone around the edges filled with silt. But when I started reading about roundhouses, none of them quite seemed to match this. So that was a tricky one. This turned out to be a sunken, it's, it's sort of a scooped feature. So they've scooped it out, they've got boulders around the edges, and then they've been, we've had this stone lining to a wall, which is no longer there. So this has to have been turf or earth bank wall. These stones wouldn't have worked on their own as a wall. Inside we've got this stone paving, but it didn't go right away across. We don't know in here was this, did the stone paving continue across the middle or was that rubbed out later? We didn't find any hearth, we didn't find any post holes in this one. Um, there's a suggestion that some of the stones, the paving stones from inside did continue out towards the north, uh, but we didn't find any really definite um, entrance to this one. But so what we did find was, as we'd seen in area one, there was a linear feature that ran out from this off to the south. Um, we don't think it's a drainage ditch, so whether it held s small posts like a little fence line. And there was also a curve linear feature that ran off on the side of this one. So that could have been an earlier phase. 
this is it from above. It's not completely round. We, when we start finding these things, as we went on, this was round house once, the next one was round house two, holding more round houses, but actually, most of them weren't round. Uh, there was only one that had a hearth. So, whether they were round houses, we're not sure. While we were carrying on in, in the first structure, we started opening up stage three, and this is what we found. So this, the little linear there that you can see just heading off from the side, was the wibbly wobbly feature that we saw in the first phase. And this became our structure two, which was definitely not round. This is, um, This is it cleaned up a bit more, the site being opened up a bit more. So again, we've got stone around the sides and these, it's really, they were a really nice internal wall facing. It couldn't have worked as a wall. They were inside the cut of this feature. So we started taking out some of the silt and we had these flags. So they didn't cover the whole surface of the inside. We had smaller stones off to the side, and actually, in the, in the corner of this feature, you can't quite see now, but it turned out that there was a big pit that had been dug in there, we think is later. Um, this turned out to have several phases, this structure. So it started out at that later, the later stage with all the stone at the higher level. We had several quern stones, so we've got a disc quern, we had a schist quern, sort of teardrop shape. And as we took out some of this silt, we realised it was actually quite deep. And underneath that, we had another series of flags. And at that level, we had quite a lot of animal bone fragments. And we found a, a lovely little spindle whirl down at the bottom there. There's the pit in the corner, full of water. It stayed dry all of last summer, all up until Christmas. We came back after Christmas and the whole thing was full of water. And it just continued like that. We pumped it out and it filled up. And um, one of the old employees came out to visit and then said, oh yes, I think this is on the line of the, the springs, the wells, and the hospital in Dundee is Nine, Nine Wells Hospital. We think is could this have been on that spring line? Don't know, but it did fill up a lot in water. An interesting one, we took the bulks out. We couldn't keep it dry, we just kept pumping out, pumping out. We took the bulks out eventually. And that wibbly wobbly linear feature that had gone off to the south started to drain the water away. So that looks like it has been a drain in that one. That's it, almost empty. So you can still see the walls were made of boulders with flatter stones forming this lining. And it looks like it's had later alterations to it. These are some of the other features. So structure three was in the corner. Again, it's not circular. It's certainly not a circular cut. The stone in there doesn't look like it was in situ. It looks much more like tumble, but within more of a circle. So whether that's been something that's tipped in, because it's actually quite a deep scoop. It had quite a lot of burnt material in this as well, burnt stones. Structure fall was one that we found. This was one of the early ones in the trench, in the trenches that we saw. This is this is one of the ones where it started to get really exciting because we had this really clear wall, really clear structure on the floor, this, these flagstones, but covered with silt, lots of silt. So as this one got opened up, it became more and more interesting. So this was the one that structure for that had the hearth. So this one seems most likely to be a roundhouse. But again, it seems to have had reuse. So. You can just about see there, there's a, in the middle of it, there were upright stones that looked like they were the edge of the hearth. 
which seems to have been sealed by later flags. This also had two areas on the outside of it. We don't really quite understand yet, but these, these seem to be part of the later phase of this, this feature, because you can just about see the upright of the internal part of the wall. The turf of the earth bank has gone now, but these flags are, are there where the wall would have been. It had another linear feature coming out of it to the south, but this one also had an internal linear, so this seemed to respect the internal wall, which was not completely central to the cut. What we found in here was that it had been scooped out, we had small cobbles, very, very fine cobble surface, which has then been cut by this internal linear. There's a row of internal post holes inside that as well. Then these, these flags have gone down. And then more silts built up. And it may be, have had this. So it's another one that could have had several phases. It also had this structure for, had post holes at the edge. So where this linear is coming off to the south, we have these post holes outside of it. And in one of the post holes, we have the really beautiful quernstone. So this is within a pit that's only just big enough to hold this quernstone. It's not broken. Most of the quernstones we found were broken and became building rubble. This one has been placed there. So, I mean, it might have been put there just to hold a post, but it seems a bit extreme, really. But it's a really beautiful quernstone. Structure five almost appears to be linked to the oddly shaped structure too. There was a line of stones in between the two of them. Um, this again, it's in a scoop. It's not circular. This one had been partially backfilled with sand. We found several quernstones in here, again, and weights. It's been cut through by a modern drain there, a post-med drain. Again, silted up. In the corner, there was a little cluster of three similar features that were all in there. Um, they were all shallow, and they had elements of the others. They were, they were less deep, they were less well preserved, but they still had traces of these cobbled walls around the edges. These didn't seem to have flags on the floor, but they had cobbles and quite a few of them. This one in particular was different to all the others because it had a ring of post holes around the outside of it. So again, I think you've had an internal lining to the wall, probably an earth bank or turf wall. This one seems to have had a ring of post holes as well. And linears coming out of it. Structure 10 is the same. A lot of these stones that we see as tumble could have been thatch weights or something. We also had three, three features which definitely weren't round. They weren't even oval. They were sort of crescent shaped and we really wanted them to be souterrains. But they weren't as deep as, as the other round or sub round features. This was 11, just the very trace of this. But again, this dark, dark silt, traces of paving traces of postals. So we don't know. If anybody has any ideas about what these things are, please do let me know because <laughs> it would be really interesting. Thank you. This is two photographs put together, but you can see the site. We've got these three shallow 
little scoop features in the corner, top northwest corner. Round hose four to the side, round hose two beyond that, these three little crescent shaped features. And just in there, we've got this little cluster of post holes. So the current thinking is that could be something like a raised granary. So this um, is quite complicated. It's shown all kinds of things. We've got the trenches in there, the excavated features in there, some of them, not all of them. You've got the new buildings, the old buildings, what they've planted in there. So those lines off to the side, to the west, are where there were lines of raspberries in the field. So we've got that going on as well. We've got, we've got the archaeology. We've also got modern postals from the raspberry canes. We've got um, lines where the, where the old polytunnels have been. So we have to pick that all apart. This was the, some of the finds that we had. So they weren't, we, it wasn't the finds rich site. Don't think that um, the ground conditions allowed for much preservation of, um, of metals. And, but it was mostly stone. And the, the finds that we did get were good finds. So we had several quern fragments. Uh, one of my favourite finds is just down there at the bottom. It's a little stone lamp and that was found in the structure two, the oddly shaped one, right at the top level. So we had lots of weights. Some of them were really nicely finished, some of them were really rough and coarse. So we could have had a combination of things like loom weights, but also fishing weights and things because we're really close to the river there. And it's a really, it's a really beautiful site and you can see why anybody would have settled there any time, but in the past, in the Iron Age and later, you had all kinds of stuff there. You had the river, so you could have done your fishing and stuff. You're not gonna flood because it's quite high ground. And I think during the Iron Age, it would have been at about the same position it is now, the same kind of height. Around the corner in Long Fog, and it would have been much more flooded up until the medieval period when it was drained. But on our site, it was always drained. This raised beach kept it. So you would have also had all the bear hunting and things going on. But by the time they were living here, they were clearly farming well enough that they had the grains. And this, so, like I say, I would really love to get the barley. This whole development was being put in place because of the International Barley Hub. And we should, we should find barley there. We've taken loads of samples. So, fingers crossed. This, I said, this site is surrounded by scheduled monuments and non-scheduled. And these are two that were picked up as crop marks. They weren't scheduled. And the thing with the crop marks, this was, this was picked up several years ago. And in that time on farmland, these things could have been ploughed out, just don't know. Luckily, because we were here and the work that they were doing, it's meant that this survived. These are some of the crop marks with the archaeology overlaid and the trenches. So there off to the west, in that top corner is our Round house one, nicely sitting in between the four trenches that just missed it. We can see it wasn't picked up as crop mark, and this was because probably there were raspberries in the field that year. So they did when it was the Scottish from from the time in the fifties, Scottish um, Research Institute. They had they had trials of raspberries, potatoes barley and it just depended what was there and then off to the east that's where the polytunnels were so again wouldn't have been picked up you can see the ridge and furrow there as well in the lower trenches and this shows 
some of the scheduled monuments. So those two overlapping circles in the middle is our site. That's the, that's the current James Hutton Institute buildings. Surrounding it are all the non-scheduled areas in green and the scheduled monuments in brown. And this is the thing about this site. It's a fantastic site, but it's one of hundreds like it probably in the landscape. It's just, and the other thing is that none of these things were the same as each other. So when we first dig, we spent ages digging around house one, got that all done, structure one. And they said, well, that's, that's very good. That's lots of information. Hopefully you can just be quicker with the next ones. But they were all different. Every single one of them was different. So they had similarities, but they weren't all the same. As part of, when we were there, um, the Institute asked, could we give site visits? Because a lot of the staff had heard about this work going on, but they'd been told not to come and interrupt us because we were taking too long anyway. So could you just please? <laughs> so the arrangement we came to was that every fortnight we would do a little tour. And so I told them basically what I'm telling you today. We took a tour walked around the site and um, if the Invergary residents heard about it, most of them did, they could ask to come along as well and that was really nice and we heard again and again, they'd heard about it, they'd seen photographs but it was only actually when they saw them that they realised how big they were, how well preserved they were and um, it was good. So the picture Dave showed you earlier of a visit to the site was the Perth and Kinross planning officers. Sophie Nicholl brought them out um, and there was a whole team of them. And again, it was really useful because this was all put in place because of the planning conditions. It has to be done, but you know, people, people don't always understand it and the planning officers don't always necessarily understand it either. So it was just a really good example of this is what can happen. So there's a there's phasing, every site is different. You can sort of look at the background, look at the history and look at what you know from maps and from crop marks. And, but until you start to dig holes in the ground, you don't quite know what's going to be there. So it was a really good exercise to bring them out. Um, the Institute as well were interested. Uh, Professor Lorna Dawson, from, who's a forensic soil scientist, came out took samples. And she is now in a second phase of working with students on projects looking at this soil. Hopefully that can give us some clues about what was happening in the past there as well. And especially on those little funny shaped, crescent shaped features, maybe she can tell us something which can give us some clues. And we had a visit from the local school, the Essex came out. That was really interesting. We asked really good questions, really intelligent questions, and sent us a really nice thank you letters. And um, so it was good because they, again, they can be told at school, this is what, this is who, people who lived here in the past. But it really helped for them to, to see this, be able to come. And, handle some of the stones and yeah it was lovely. I've put this in because it was really interesting to me that one of the questions was how of these things why is there so much soil in these things to me um, I was more it struck me that they're so shallow Actually, the soil scientists were saying, why is there so much soil in them? They were coming out from the other place. But while we were there, we had um, wind would come whipping along the, the valley. And if it was really windy, you can see that top side, everything would fill full of sand. It rained a lot at times. And again, that would just come, come in and leave a silt behind. The hoar frosts on that site were absolutely amazing, but that would top, they would pop the archaeology up, and so we would end up that would sort of push the top off everything about an inch, then it would all melt, and it was like walking on popcorn. We had a little bit of stuff, not too much. 
So we dug 100% of this site in the area where they were going to build. We didn't go beyond that. What we did was we would, within the development area, we would concentrate where the archaeology was, extend at least 10 metres beyond that until the archaeology ran out. But 100% of it, because this ground was not going to survive, because they've lowered the ground in there to put the new buildings. Um, some of these things were really close together, so they may not have worked, especially if they had these turf walls, they would be quite thick, and the roofs, they seem too close probably to work together. So one of the questions is, what date are they? And again, it looks like it's probably had an Iron Age origin, but it could have had later reuse, and especially the oddly shaped one. Seems I know there are sort of these possible parallels to the pit karmic type buildings with this drain running through. So, from a commercial point of view, we were able to work together. We had to work together on this site. So Sophie Dickel was absolutely amazing from Perth and Kinross. She, um, she put in place protocols so that we could deal with the archaeology it came and then we worked with the planners, with the clients. And so it allowed everything to progress. And it's been difficult for the client because they've had to find the money for it. But if they want the building, then that's just what has to happen. So full analysis and assessment is yet to come. Hopefully, it will feed into the research questions. Um, and the crop marks, all of that. This is um, what we ended up with. So this was area two. And just behind us, we've got a great big burrow pit. This area where we were digging, where all of the best archaeology was, was the highest point in the field. And they wanted this to, they wanted to lower this ground level to raise the ground level somewhere else for the buildings. We couldn't do that because we needed to do the archaeology, so they borrowed from this great big pit. Um, so that's a huge digger there behind Roundhouse One. But you can see the river there behind, it's all really close. Um, but we work together. The whole thing could not have worked without the team, and we had some really good people working on this and um, I made them work in some horrible conditions <laughs> we had wind and rain and hail and all kinds of things but they did it with a good spirit good heart and we had a really good outcome that bottom picture they were standing trying to hold keep the sun out because the sun was coming through the window in the building we were trying to photograph something or other so. that's the team part of the team not all of them. We had up to about 12 people at times. We've got an extra one now. Laura in the middle was sitting there with a bump. That's now a little boy.